Ah, uh, yes. Uh, we are online, aren't we? <laughs> oh, yes. What do I even start, people? Yogizilla here. And this is Z. Not the gang minute. I knew something was off. This is the uh, Geektastic vlog. So let's make sure that we... Uh, I'm looking at it and I'm like, there's something wrong here. Why do I feel like I f forgot to change something? The Geektastic vlog. Man, this is more personalized. Yogi's Geek Geektastic vlog. This is where I talk to you guys every week and uh, tell you about stuff that's on my mind. Uh, rant. Ooh, what did I just do? There should be an S there. Oh, we're off to a professional start here. <laughs> All right, we're good to go there. Um, yeah, the reason, the reason I'm kind of in disarray is because uh, I'm winding down from what's been a very busy summer. Uh, finally, you know, we're in the final stretch. Uh, we're in August, and a family that was visiting is going back home, and, you know, kids are going to go back to school soon. So normal see will return soon, not soon enough. Because I love my family, but I hate being behind on work. And right now I'm in major catch up mode. There's a bunch of new articles coming to uh, geekyantics.net. Fix that there. ADD's kicking in. And um, there's a lot of projects that I'm working on. But um, I have the most urgency right now before I go into, into the rants and crazy tangents like I usually do. Let's open up this blind. Because, yeah, we need a little bit of light in here. Open, let there be light. Oh, um, but the biggest thing is two Kickstarter projects. One in particular that I'm partial to because it's some it's a game that's right up my alley, and it's also a friend of a friend, so I want to help them out. And that game is Fire with Fire. Um, and I know Obi was trying to promote it on Sunday Dose, but. He's all like flustered, kind of going all over the place. But uh, just to be clear, the, the two games we're talking about were Fire with Fire and Factions, a customizable war game, which are on Kickstarter. And both of those games, their funding period ends on August 10th, 2014. Just frame reference. So in right now, as I'm as I'm putting this uh, video together, as I'm recording this and I'm broadcasting this. Uh, by the way, channel Yogi Zilla on Twitch. Um, yeah, right now it's basically a little over a week. No, a week exactly. Because it's a Sunday from now. So yeah. Let's get uh, some of the stuff that I heart. Yeah. And let's get the geeky antics uh, watermark up there too. Boom. But in the background, if you can see, uh, you can kind of see some of the um style of uh fire with fire which is a it's a tower defense game with pvp and co-op in it um i think if you play tower wars think of that or if you play warcraft 3 any of number of the different tower defense games they had in there think of that it's an online focused tower defense game they call it a tower attack and defense i think the better way would have been uh, they need a copy editor. Just if you need some help, guys. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, online tower defense and it's, and and offense or offense and defense. Uh, attack doesn't fit in there properly, not as well as offense. So you are uh, attack, you attack and defend. Whichever way you want to say it. Hey, puffin in the house. What's up, bro? I'm just doing a quick vlog. Nothing too big. Thanks for stopping by, bro. <laughs> I like he does the kappa face with the little little arm waving. But um so yeah, I would definitely appreciate if you guys go support it, uh faction the factions game and uh, Fire with Fighter both both on uh Kickstarter. Just uh you can just go in the search bar and look up Fire with Fire and uh factions, you may have to do factions customizable. Actually, easiest way probably factions space war game one word and it should come right up um that one i was contacted contacted directly on twitter and the guys seem nice enough the game looks really cool it's uh, a tabletop game 
So it's you know it's really neat. It's tile based and you know fully customizable. It looks very promising. But if if you have to choose one or the other to throw your 100% support behind, fire with fire because a friend of a friend, I want to help them out. And both of these games are like around 50% um, funded right now. The thing is, you know, you a lot of people feel like, oh, I don't have an, I don't have that much money, so I can't really give anything. But even if it's a dollar, and if you can't do that, all right, I understand. Uh, then you know, send your friends over, you know, um, share it like crazy, you know, get it on all the stuff, Pinterest, Tumblr, Red, Reddit, whatever, whatever you use, Facebook, you know, Twitter, just get it out there, help these guys out. These are indie developers, and you know, they have very ambitious projects, you know, very amb ambitious goals, and they need the help. Um, the factions game has a very aggressive goal. It's, I think they're asking like 25 or 30 k. And I just, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer or whatever, but I don't, I don't see it happening. Because um, that's a lot of money to raise, and only halfway there. Fire with Fire looks like it can make its goal. So, um, hopefully they both do. That'd be great. And we can say that we were part of that success. So, cross your fingers, guys. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about, it's a, big, a bit of a peeve and a big rant. Um that I've noticed a lot on, on podcasts and uh, websites and just journalism of any sort. Um, it's kind of the misinformation of media outlets. And the thing is, sometimes people are otherwise very knowledgeable or credible, and then they spread these the news items that uh, they hear from others, and then it becomes a game of telephone where the, the news is kind of exaggerated and the original message is lost in translation. A good example of this is the recent uh, Google acquisition of Twitch. People were saying, oh, they, they paid $1 billion cash for it. Uh, no. No, no, I haven't found a single source. I haven't received a single press release. Nada that confirms that this this is true. If anything, people have been more adamant about saying that Google refused to comment on the details of the deal, other than that it was confirmed and, and done. You know, the only places that I found where they said it was a, a billion dollars, billion dollars was the offer, but it was never confirmed, and it certainly wasn't confirmed as a cash deal. And come on, let's be realistic. It's probably stock options and all other kind of things in there. But um, the 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 other thing is that, and it just it just drives me nuts when people say it. And we, and if we have said anything like this, I apologize. Uh, if any on any other, other podcasts on our network, you know, everybody on the Geeky Antics Network is uh, independent, an independent contributor. No one really works for Geeky Antics. We have guidelines and uh, quality controls and um, st some requirements, but. Everyone pretty much could do their own thing, and they don't. And they don't represent us, the network as a whole, and vice versa. We just help each other out, you know. And where it's a platform for people to get their message out. But it does, you know, even with us, we have people that sometimes say things, and then it's wrong. And I've done it myself. But uh, you know, so one thing I say: if you're gonna report on this kind of thing, and you're not a hundred percent sure. Don't say it with such conviction. They'll say, oh, it was, you know, they, they, it's confirmed that they did this. Or they absolutely, this is what happened. This is exactly what happened. No, say, you can say something like to cover your, your own ass. Um, you know, to say uh, the deal was for around a billion dollars uh, in value or a billion dollars, whatever, for a round. And then, then, you know, you have wiggle room. You know, don't put a period at the end of that. It was for a billion dollars. Exactly, no. And definitely not cash. Uh, again, the original offer that Google had for Twitch was for a billion dollars, but it, you know, again, it wasn't confirmed. And, and I keep saying it again, but it's just because yeah. then people are going to start spreading it around. They're going to hear on, on other podcasts or find it on other websites, and they're going to spread it around. Um, I went to VentureBeat.com, and one of the many sites I was checking to see who, who had a real, a real finger on the whole thing, and it said, "Oh." Um, is confirmed the billion dollar deal. Uh, we confirmed this through people that are close to the deal. Okay, what's your who's your source? But they won't say. So you know, I'm sorry. I know that sometimes these media outlets want to keep their sources uh, protected, 
But if you can't name your source, I'm pretty much going to guess that you're just doing more of the he says, she said stuff. And, uh, you know, he says, she said, telephone stuff. Me, 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 me. A tongue twist, I can't even talk right now. Um, so, yeah, I, I have a big issue with that. I don't don't say stuff like that uh, and pass it out for truth because then other people are going to be repeating, reporting the same thing. The same. But, you know, the important part of that news is that Google did bite switch and it's going to make an impact. And while many of us are hopeful and we want to be optimistic, you know, let's just be, let's face it. If you're spending a billion dollars on a company, the number one thing you want to do is, is find a way to make it as profitable as possible ASAP. So Google's not going to think about the little guys or about pissing off people. They're going to think about how can we churn out more money from this thing. So I don't know. I'm scared. Uh, I'm not going to give up on the Twitch thing, guys, but I'm definitely uh, looking at other strategies and other things we're going to focus on much more. Um, and we are looking at potential alternatives to Twitch if, if the proverbial poop does hit the, the fan. By the way, what's up, BFT, in the chat? I see you lurking over there, brother. But uh, the other thing that kind of goes hand-in-hand -hand with that uh, is get on press, uh, press lists. It's really easy for anyone to do this, and um, it's the best. It's the best thing to do if you really want to do news as a main thing or one of your or your only focus. Especially if it's your only focus, get on press list. It's really easy to do. You know, a lot of times you could do them online. Just uh, look up PR companies that are handling different accounts that you're interested in, um, different clients you're interested in, different companies you're interested in, and um, you go to the major sites that kind of sell lists to, uh, to different companies for for email blasts and whatnot um like uh, pr news web um games press um i mean if you just google it sign up for uh, press releases or sign up for press lists there's places you can go there's a ton of them i can't even begin to list them and get on those and you'll get email alerts and you'll get Something you'll get real um, mail if you want to do that. Um, and what's cool is it builds credibility as a, as a journalist, and you can get your hands on um, release copies of games. You could check your facts. You could, you know, have that early access to information. Of course, um, having a press, um, a PR contact at any company is always the best thing. So if there's certain companies you really are keeping an eye on, you want to just, you know. Make sure you you contact those people directly because the press release you know, press releases you know they go out um it's a blast it's, they go out en masse and uh, you know a lot of people get them so if you want to be like you know the first to report something you want to have friends inside of a company or PR contacts uh, you know the the bigger the company the more of a chance they're gonna have multi you know at least one PR person a representative spokesperson or multiple PR firms working for them. And they usually will leverage those the bigger the, the company is. You know, the main corporation, there's definitely very little chance you're going to get an inside person. Um, so, you know, there's some exceptions, but, you know, you usually want to go to the PR firms. But uh, so get on those press lists, and then you'll go with some embarrassment of misreporting information. Um, and just in general, when you speak, um, you know, I feel like when people write um, in particular, People speak in, are, are so quick to speak in absolutes and superlatives. And it's like, okay, yeah, this is this is the fact. This is the only way you could do X. This is the only truth, the only reality I accept. And then you spread that ignorance, and then other people start adopting it. Like, I see that with MOBAs. And I'm about to blog about all this stuff, actually, because it, it really is a sore point for me. Like, with MOBAs, people say... This is the only way you can build this character is X. You know, MMORPGs too. It's the same similar thing. Or the only that character is only viable in this role. Or this is the best. This is the only team composition that's really good at at high tier competition. Blah blah blah. You know, when you say states and stuff like that, um, ninety percent of the time, or even ninety nine percent of the time, is going to be an opinion. But what you could do if if it's if you want to give that opinion credibility and have people really examine and uh, you know judge your opinion in a way that is constructive and, and productive better yet um, give them a frame of reference quote your sources quote your exp uh, share your experiences um, you know and, and, and qualify those statements 
so people know where you're coming from and why you say that, uh, you know, because otherwise you just come off really douchey, and that's a big thing. So BFT's just hanging out. Yeah, me too, man. I'm just doing a quick little vlog, and then I'm gonna, you know, uh, come back and probably do a stream later on tonight. Probably on a, a late night stream, some Hearthstone and whatnot. So th those are big things. Uh, and, and again, you know, the beautiful thing now is that anyone can get into games journalism, for example. Um, and, and blogs are being treated like any other website or media outlet, which is great. It should be. The problem also with that, though, on the flip side, is that since anyone could get into games general, gaming journalism or you know, video game journalism, whichever way you want to say it, um, that also means that there's a lot more competition and a lot more of a chance that people will not trust your voice. So you got to be careful when you, you share information. You're... Uh, aware of that because anything you do to discredit yourself and your brand will get people to stop listening and stop tuning in so that, that, that's a very important thing to look at um you know because you know it, it comes doing the gaming journalism comes with a lot of cool perks like you can get uh press passes and get access to certain events and you know big, big um if you want to get some of the bigger games some of the bigger companies to give you stuff or uh, give you, you know, get, whether it's access or, or freebies or whatever, swag, um, review copies of games, whatever, free hardware. Um, what you want to do is, is, you know, build that, that credibility and that audience that trusts you so they see that you have influence. Uh, the, big, the bigger companies, they want numbers. They want to see a lot of hits. They want to see uh, average page count per visitor, average time per visit, you know, stuff like that, average time on page. Um, they like that number. I mean, especially, they, they really like, the number, number one thing they're probably going to look at is unique monthly visitors or daily count of uh, visitors, uh, averages or hard numbers, you know, for the past six months or whatever. Um, but, you know, the smaller companies, they're very flexible, and you'd be surprised how generous they'll be just to get the word out. So I think, I think it's always great to build um, credibility, be trustworthy, you know, Always speak in a manner that's clear and gives people a way to further explore a topic, right? And and, and then with that trust, building an audience that will take action and really uh, share your message because you can have a massive audience, but if no one believes you, no one trusts you, and no one's uh, engaged by you, then it's almost like having no audience or a really small audience, you know, whereas you can have a really small audience that's really highly engaged, tightly knit, community and they'll do things and they'll take action and they'll share your message and they'll become part of the experience so it's a very big difference so those are my rants um and i think i'm gonna keep, keep it there but uh tonight and this week i hope to do lots of dusting off hashtag the dust off which you're gonna get back into hearthstone catch up on chris next ramus of course um uh probably stream some dawn gate finally on my side um, I want to get back into FTL, Soulforge, uh, maybe some scrolls. Um, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot. Of, if you look at my Steam list, there's a lot of games on there. So, uh, if you're not following me on Steam, just add me, Yogizilla. You can see my library. I, I might even pick up a couple of games today. But, uh, most of all, let's connect on our main hub, my main hub. My main project, my main squeeze, my baby, geekyantics.net. We have tons of awesome writers, uh, game designers, beta testers, crazy geeks, streamers, podcasters, just a bit of everything. People that do arts and crafts, people that, that draw. We have all kinds of awesome creative people, uh, geeks on the site. So geekyantics.net, check us out. And you can leave us a voicemail, 206-415-4987. You can see all the information right below. Boop, right there. Uh, and the Obi, Obi, not since you keep messing up the, the email address, I, I put it right in the footer, mail at geekyantics.net. So keep it simple, and that's what I do. But again, check out Fire With Fire on um, Kickstarter and support that. Uh, great people behind that project, including our, our friend, SG, 
in the R9 cast. We, we have to get on one of our shows on uh, Gigantics, actually. Uh, SG's awesome. Uh, he has left a voicemail before, though, so he's doing the music for the for the game, so that's pretty awesome. He does some good, some awesome beats. But anyway, let me get out of here. This is Yogizilla. This has been the Geek Tastic Vlog. And uh, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And uh, here's to another awesome week, guys. Peace.